ABC 10 News at 7 starts now. The Petco Park vaccine superstation is getting ready to shut down again because of a supply shortage. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. That winter storm hitting much of the country is preventing our supply from getting here. The Petco site will close tomorrow and Saturday, but it could extend to Sunday and Monday. All appointments will be rescheduled. In the meantime, all county pods in the San Marcos Superstation will offer second doses only. And all three sharp sponsored county locations will only have enough doses for Pfizer appointments Friday through Sunday. The winter storms aren't the only thing complicating our vaccine rollout. We've seen an uneven supply of doses over the last few days. ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl goes in depth to explain what's going on. This week, the vaccination center at Petco Park had to shut down for three days because a shipment of doses never arrived. But at the same time, Sharp Healthcare announced it had doses. Enough for 2,000 appointments at sites in La Mesa and Chula Vista. One county spokesman tells me the vaccine logistics are mind boggling for two reasons. First, they're dealing with two vaccine makers. Some vaccine sites use Pfizer, some use Moderna, some use a mixture of both. The Petco site is administering Moderna, uh, the Chula Vista site is administering Pfizer. So when we miss a shipment of Moderna, then that impacts one site that does not impact the other site. The other reason is a little more complicated. San Diego County gets a certain number of doses from the state each week and distributes those doses to vaccination sites. Some of those sites are run by the county itself. Others are run by health care providers like Sharp, Scripps, or UC San Diego. But those hospital systems don't just get doses from the county. They also get some doses directly from Pfizer and Moderna for their patients and staff. And sometimes they can shift things around. We do, I will say, have, have uh, generally very good cooperation uh, with our, our health care providers. Uh, so they may get their own uh, dosages for their internal use, and then we supply dosages when they're staffing a pod. Uh, but they've been very flexible and very willing to loan some of theirs to help bridge us through, and, and we have worked uh, very, very collaboratively there. These tangled supply chains are one reason why the state is turning over vaccine distribution to Blue Shield over the coming weeks. A county spokesman says they expect Blue Shield will consolidate things, so there are fewer steps in between the drug makers and the vaccination sites but they don't have many details. We don't know exactly uh, what will happen. I think they understand uh, our situation and I think that they're, they're certainly not going to try and uh, disrupt a system uh, that, that by and large is generally working. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. The Blue Shield takeover will happen in stages. The company will start calling the shots for San Diego March 7th. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. We know there are a lot of questions and different experiences with the vaccine rollout. Our ABC 10 News in-depth team is committed to tracking down answers and sharing your stories. Just send us an email at tips at 10 newscom Our COVID case numbers rose today, but still stayed below 1,000. Our test positivity rate held at a solid 4%. But another 36 people have lost their lives to coronavirus, bringing that total to more than 3,100. California lawmakers have agreed on a $6 billion plan aimed at getting kids back in the classroom. The money is three times what Governor Newsom proposed back in December. Now, the plan would also require counties to offer vaccinations to staff who return to in-person classes. Any school getting money would have to reopen by April 15th to vulnerable students and those in lower grades. In a statement, Newsom said the proposal doesn't go far enough or fast enough, and he looks forward to working with the legislature to get kids back to school as quickly as possible. The pandemic has proven to be good for the bottom line of San Diego-based Jack in the Box. The company reported strong fiscal first quarter earnings this week. Jack in the Box's CEO says that although fewer people are getting takeout, those who do are buying more food and choosing higher priced items. You can stay on top of any new developments with coronavirus by downloading the 10 News app. A free version is available in the App Store. We have breaking news right now. This is a lot picture from Lincoln Park where a man has been hurt after being hit by a car. It happened just before 615 at 47th and Logan. The driver did stay at the scene, but police have closed down the intersection. 
and we don't know yet exactly what happened, but the man hit was taken to the hospital. All right, happening now in just a few minutes, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher will deliver this state of the county address and among other things, Fletcher will talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and how our region can recover from it. You're going to hear some on of tonight's speech on ABC 10 News at 11. SDG&E is urging San Diegans to help with the power situation in other parts of the country. Millions of people lost electricity in the brutal winter storms. Our power grid is interconnected with other parts of the country. So SDG&E says reducing power and gas usage here can help them elsewhere. And some uh, simple things you can do is include using warm instead of hot water when you wash clothing, unplugging electronics when they're not in use, and lowering your thermostat. A spectacle on the shores of Carlsbad for the next month. Heavy equipment near the old Encina power plant will funnel thousands of cubic yards of sand per day onto the beach. Our ABC 10 News reporter John Horn explains how the work protects both our beaches and our water supply. There's a lot of spectators that we get, you know, and it's they're all, all interested. On a picture perfect San Diego day, locals couldn't help but notice the bulldozers on Carlsbad's beach. They were lifting the sand coming from this 5,000 foot pipe. It's been done for the past 50 years, every couple years or so. Pat Crane is leading the project for Poseidon Water, which runs the desalination plant adjacent to the old Encina power plant. The desalination plant converts 50 million gallons of ocean water to drinking water per day, providing 10% of the region's water supply. The ocean water flows under Highway 101 and into the Agua Hedionda Lagoon into the plant. Problem is, the opening gets clogged every few years. In order to maintain that water flow, we need to periodically dredge the opening of the lagoon. Crews brought this massive barge up from the South Bay, waiting for just the right conditions to fit it under the bridge. By the end of March, it will have pumped 300,000 cubic yards of sand to fill the beaches in Carlsbad. And that's important because without it, the beaches could disappear. So if we weren't replenishing that sand on the beach, it would go back to its natural state, which is a rocky cobblestone beach. And that would be a huge bummer, especially on these sunny days. John Horn, ABC 10 News. It would be a bummer. The project will cost three to four million dollars. Crews will work daylight hours Monday through Saturday. They expect to wrap up by late March, but they do have until April 15th to finish the job. A big accomplishment on the red planet is reason to celebrate here in San Diego. Touch on confirmed. Yes. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. There was plenty of cheering at NASA today as the Mars rover successfully landed. We're now seeing the first images sent back at the rocky surface of Mars. And we told you yesterday how San Diego-based Qualcomm helped build the small helicopter, the Perseverance rover, which was brought to Mars. The rover is also carrying five cameras built by Malin Space Science Systems in Sorrento Valley. And the buzz continues tonight over the Padres reported 14-year, $340 million contract extension for Fernando Tatis Jr. As our ABC Tenders reporter Steve Smith tells us, the Padres feel their shortstop will be worth every penny. It's not totally official as of yet, but Fernando Tatis Jr. is about to be a $300 million man, $340 million over 14 years to be exact. It's the third largest contract in baseball history, and although Tatis is still only 22 years old, manager Jace Tingler says it's well-deserved. I think the easiest thing to see you know, with him is his talent. Um, you know, and that's that, that's on all aspects, you know, the, the, the way he runs, the way he moves, you know, the, the, the way he plays the game with just such a fun spirit. Tatis Jr. has yet to play a full season since arriving to the big leagues in 2019. But Tingler says Tatis has the ability to be one of those transcendent players, kind of like a Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky. That, that, that's a yes. That's a, that's a definite. Um, you know, like I said, I think the talent's undeniable. Tatis's play on the field, his exuberance, his charisma and personality, it's gained him national attention, which has led to Gatorade and video games seeking his services. I think he's the, the, the right guy to, to market the sport. I think he's the right guy uh, to... Um, you know, for, for, for just the industry of baseball. Now, in years past, Padres' ownership was often criticized for not spending big money. 
But then along came free agent Eric Hosmer, a nice contract extension for Will Myers, $300 million for Manny Machado, and a new message of spending what it takes to win. You know, certainly with ownership and, and the front office being able to make the moves, uh, we've got a lot of belief in, in the group that we have in that clubhouse and the team that we're going to put on the field. I'm Steve Smith, ABC 10 News. And the Padres are not expected to officially announce the Tatis deal until next week after he and the rest of the position players report to spring training in Peoria.